In Climate Watch, two new temperature records are raising alarms about the pace of climate change. First, experts say that this January was the hottest one on record. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released new numbers on Thursday. They revealed global surface temperatures were over two degrees above the 20th century average. The four warmest Januaries have all occurred since 2016. Scientists predict 2020 as a whole will be among the five warmest years on record. And in Antarctica, researchers saw the highest temperature ever recorded in the region. An island just off of the continental mainland registered a record high of 68 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica. Antarctica has been warming at an alarming rate in recent years. The heat is causing glaciers to weaken and icebergs to break off. Joining me now is, climate, is climatologist Gavin Schmidt. He's the director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank the hottest January on record. Yeah, so I, we've been we've been seeing this year on year. Like last year was uh, the uh, the second warmest year ever. The last five years have been the last uh, been the hottest five years. And you know this January globally and 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 here uh, particularly uh, has been uh, st stunningly warm. I couldn't believe those temperatures out of Antarctica. I, I'm lucky enough to have traveled to Antarctica uh, mm -hmm. before, but 68 degrees in Antarctica. <laughs> Yeah, that's I mean, unheard of. Uh, well, yes, I mean it's 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 a record for any station ar anywhere around Antarctica. And uh, you go there in the summertime; it's the summer there, right? Uh, there's there's a lot of wildlife. The winter it's, here is the summer there, that's right? That's right. Um, there's a lot of open water, but there's still a lot of ice, right? So it doesn't generally get much above zero, uh, so or zero Celsius, so 32. So 68 is really a big deal. And as your uh, as your article said. You know, what's happening is that the oceans are warming up there as well, and they're actually melting some of those glaciers from underneath. And we saw uh, just this week a very large iceberg carve off what's called the Pine Island Glacier, which is, is that just the one a little that was bit... like the size of Seattle? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, uh, I mean th these are big. And, th and that, uh, ice, uh, that ice um, stream has been retreating massively in the last 30 years that we've been monitoring it. And remind our viewers the implications of of those icebergs melting, of the calving that we're seeing. Right, so those icebergs, those, that, those ice streams are, are draining the ice from the continent. So it snows on the continent, and then that kind of pushes down the ice, and as it goes into the ocean, it raises sea levels. So the more that you're pushing into the ocean, the faster sea levels are rising. And we know that Antarctica as a whole is losing around uh, 200 gigatons of water every year, and that's raising sea level uh, all around the world and, and, and even here in New York. Now, what are the actual implications? What does this mean in terms of how fast things are accelerating? There, uh, there are deniers who say that this, you know, that, that this is all part of nature's process. What do you say to those people? So we've looked. We've investigated all the natural things that are causing change, uh, the wobbles in the Earth's orbit, the volcanoes, the sun, and we've looked at all of those things, and they don't add up to what we're seeing. But then when you look at what we're doing, what humans are doing, the increases in greenhouse gases, the increases in air pollution, the deforestation uh, that is ongoing in the tropics, all of these things add up to what we're seeing. And so when people ask us, well, you know, what's causing these trends? The answer is us, and it's about 100% of these trends are being caused by our activities as a society. And how is, the, how is this super warm January um, playing out elsewhere in the globe? Uh, so uh, the super warm January, so in the U.S., this is the warmest winter that we've had on record. Uh, this has been extremely warm. Records are breaking uh, across Europe uh, and in, uh, in Siberia. We're seeing massive uh, temperature changes uh, in almost all of the oceans. What's happening is that the whole planet is warming. Like, you know, we, we've had weather before, right? You know, we've had warm parts and cold parts, right? So, so Alaska is, is, is quite cold at the moment, um, but that doesn't, that doesn't match up to the number of places that are record warm. Because you're looking at historical trends right, overall. And, and you're looking at these long-term trends. And, yeah, sure, there's, there's, there's natural variations on top of that. We're not always going to have a winter this warm, but... The winters that like this, we never used to have winters like this, right? These are new and now they're persistent. So it's much, much more likely to have a warm winter now than it was. And that has implications for agriculture, it has implications for uh, sea level, it has implications for ski resorts. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a cascading effect. And there are a lot of people 
who see the short-term pleasure of having a nice warm January. Right. Um, but but there are, as you're saying, greater implications. Let's go a little bit deeper into some right. of those. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. So uh, I was in Australia, uh, our summer, their winter, and everybody was saying, what a lovely winter it was. It was warmer than normal. It was drier than normal. Everyone That's was saying, oh, this is, like, this is so right. pleasant. You know, we were on the beach. It was all very nice. But the consequences in Australia were that the, the soil dried out and there wasn't enough water. And then when the summer came and it became scorching hot, basically the country caught fire, right? And so the, the so nice... So you see a direct the, link to a, those, exactly. those fires there's, that there's we've a, all been horrified by. Well, that, that, that's exactly right. The, what's happening in parts of the thing when, well, you don't want it to be cold, you don't want it to be rainy. OK, but that has implications because the climate is a connected system, right? Agriculture relies on the fact that, you know, blooms don't happen before the last frosts, right? So this is going to be a terrible year for apple crops, for instance. Right? You know, because things are going to bloom and then there's going to be a hard frost sometime in, uh, in March or uh, April and everything is going to get reset. And it will be a very, very important and, and, and bad consequence for them. The same thing for maple trees. Right? There, there's, we rely so much on the subtleties of the climate system and the, and the seasonal cycle that all of those things are now being disrupted at a faster rate. And the trend lines are... Well, the continue lines... can uh, continue to get worse. It's all amplified. I, I saw that scientists are predicting that this is going to be the among the five warmest for the planet. And yes. as you map this out into the future, it just continues to get worse, right? Well, it continues to get worse to the extent that we do not change our behavior. So we ha we have choices as a society. You know, we can continue to make uh, bad choices that increase the amount of emissions going into the atmosphere. You know, that's going to put us on a trajectory that's like this. Or we can make better choices and reduce the amount of emissions uh, that we're uh, putting into the atmosphere. And that's going to kind of hopefully stabilize things. But those, that's our choice, right? We can, we can stabilize the situation uh, or we can just keep our foot on the accelerator and make it worse year in, year out. And... You know, we have warmed only about two degrees Fahrenheit globally since the last, uh, since, the, since the 19th century. And you think, well, that's not very much, right? But we're already seeing the implications of that. We're already seeing the changes. And what we're predicting for what might happen by the end of the century is not just two degrees Fahrenheit. It's four, it's six, it's potentially eight degrees Fahrenheit. And that is such a large number that that is as warm as the last ice age was cold, but in the other direction. So, honestly, it makes uh, it makes you feel a little defeated. Uh, and I, I was hearing um, I was hearing on another program some people who've decided not to have children because they think this is right. the end of the world. Is there actually hope? Uh, so I have a child, and uh, and and what you see when you have children is the hope being regenerated. You know, you see uh, the youth movement today uh, turning to their supposed elders and betters and saying, why are you not dealing with this situation? And basically shaming them into acting and not just talking about things. And I, I, I find that tremendously refreshing. Thank you, too. Gavin Schmidt, I appreciate you coming out here and giving us a reality check and also giving us a little bit of hope.